This is all about the Portland Trailblazers announcing the hiring of their new head coach. Now, this isn't really a sports show. You probably know that if you watch it, but this really isn't a sports story. It, it got much deeper than that. Now, I want to warn you, we are about to talk about sexual assault, and some of the details will be hard for people to hear. This weekend, the Blazers officially named Chauncey Billups as their head coach. Famous name, he played 17 years in the NBA. He's been an assistant coach for the Los Angeles Clippers for the last year. He was also accused of gang raping a woman in 1997 with two other men. Police reports say she went to the hospital, had a rape kit exam, and it revealed injuries to her genitals and throat. Billups was not charged with the crime, but the woman sued him and settled. He settled with her out of court three years later. Billups denies the allegations, admitting they had a sexual encounter, but saying that it was consensual. Now, today, the Blazers held a press conference introducing Billups to Portland. General Manager Neil O'Shea started things off by talking about those allegations against Billups, which he says they took, quote, very seriously during the hiring process. We not only conducted our traditional background check after offering him the position, we also commissioned an independent investigation into the incident in question in 1997. The findings of that incident corroborated Chauncey's recollection of the events that nothing non-consensual happened. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how, how exactly did they conduct this investigation? Who did they talk to? What did those people tell them? Here's O'Shea's response to that line of questioning. You're just going to have to take our word that we hired an experienced firm that ran an investigation that gave us the results we've already discussed. All right, so not many details there on that, but we still did get to hear from Billups. He also opened his portion of the press conference by addressing the allegations against him. I learned at a very young age as a player, and not only a player, but a, a young man, a young adult, that every decision, you know, every decision has consequences. But this, this experience has shaped my life in so many different ways. Um, my decision making, obviously, who I allow to be in my life, um, the friendships and the relationships that I have um, and how I go about them, you know, it's impacted every, every decision that I make. Okay. There were a lot of reporters there. And one of those reporters asked Billups a follow-up question based on what you just heard him say. And here's what happened. Uh, you said the 1997 incident shaped you in unbelievable ways. Can you maybe elaborate on that and, and how it helped shape you? Jason, we appreciate your question. We've addressed this. Um, it's been asked and answered. So um, happy to move on to the, to the next question here. So that moment right there, that moment has been getting a lot of attention and a lot of backlash from fans, from the local media, from the national media. It's in, in some ways become a, a big part of this story. Not how this is a, a new era for the Blazers, not how Billups is going to improve the team's defense. Right now, the story seems to be how the Blazers won't answer questions about the rape allegations against their new head coach, literally telling reporters to move on. I spoke with Brenda Tracy about this. She's an advocate for sexual assault survivors. She is one herself. In 1998, she accused Oregon State football players of gang raping her. Here's what she had to say about the Blazers cutting off that question. That was extremely harmful. And I think that's, uh, that was a pivotal moment in the press conference. I think that that question would have given us insight into how Billups um, has, you know, processed the event um, and, and would have given us some insight into who he is as a man and how he may lead as a coach. Um, and we didn't get that opportunity. He didn't get to say anything. Uh, but I also think that this was probably all, you know, decided before the press conference. Um, I don't know that. I, I, th I felt like, you know, everything was kind of rehearsed, laid out what was going to be said, what was going to be addressed, what wasn't going to be addressed. And it was a very much like we already answered. Move on. Get over it. We're done with that. We made a decision. We're not talking about that anymore. Now, Billups does have his defenders, some people who believe he's innocent, other people who say they really don't know what happened that night, so they can't make a judgment call either way. And I asked Tracy about those people and how she thinks they should consider this case and these allegations. 
think that there's a lot to go on in this case. I think that there is a rape kit. I think there's a police report. There's a settled civil suit that we don't know about. There's conflicting, you know, statements from him from back then. Um, there's a lot of unanswered questions. So there's a lot to go on. And in general, you know, I think the population needs to understand too, false reports are very rare. Um, you know, maybe 2%. Uh, most survivors are telling the truth that something did happen. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, while most sexual violence is committed by men, most men don't commit sexual violence. And I just don't think that there's like, what, 30, about 30 head coaching positions in the NBA. Did we really need to hire somebody with this type of a history? There, there are other qualified candidates for, for this position. Speaking of the other candidates, we should also talk about the other top choices for the Blazers head coaching job. One was this woman, Becky Hammond, who's been an assistant coach for the San Antonio Spurs since 2014. She would have been the first ever female head coach of an NBA team. The Blazers were also considering Jason Kidd, who's been with a few different teams, but fans weren't happy about him either because he pleaded guilty to domestic violence in 2001, and he was just named the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks. 